Um, my topic, as you see, is about involving people in shaping technology. Um, the, we've said a lot about mobile phones. Well, there have been many mentions. Can I ask for a show of hands, how many of you have mobile phones? A big number. How many of you have computers or access to a computer? Also a big number. And how many of you have ever been invited to be involved in the design of those products? A rather smaller number, so kind of making the, the point about this particular uh, presentation. The, the need, if we spend some time uh, looking at the two key issues in this area, one is why should you involve people, particularly older people, in design and decision making? And the other is how should we, how can we enable designers and providers to actually listen to users? They're both huge subjects. We've already heard a great deal about them through this morning. So I'm just going to um, try and give you a couple of um, examples and focus on uh, some of the possibilities. If we think about the value of user involvement, the fact that so few of us have actually been involved in deciding about the technology that is an integral part of our lives is clearly concerning. It's concerning for lots of reasons. For one, it means that we don't actually get what we want. I think the word simple to use has come up probably about eight times. I kind of lost count. But the importance of simplicity in design and making things easy to use um, are, have come up several times already, and we have more talks about them this afternoon. We're not going to get that simplicity and that match between user needs and the technology unless we do involve users. A reason that I haven't actually listed here, and that's remiss of me, is that you don't feel you own a product, you don't feel you own a device, you don't feel it's really yours if you've just got to accept it how it is or if it's imposed on you. And some of the issues in the telecare and telehealth field are about the fact that others make the decisions for you, that you don't really feel you're making choices. So the value of user involvement is that it builds the confidence and capacity of uh, older users. Um, in using the technology that they're provided with, but also adapting it to meet their own needs. Having the understanding of it, having been part of the development process, uh, you're much more able to say, well, this is what I really need this to do, and this is how I personalize it. It develops skills and understanding of their own needs and how they're changing. Um, and above all, I don't know if it's about above all, particularly important for designers and developers, is that it elicits rich requirements, user requirements, which don't just reflect particular single functions, such as the last speaker mentioned. It's not about just saying, how do we support this disease? How do we help people handle this condition? It's about looking at this in the round. And by involving users, you get that kind of rich picture about the context in which they're in, the needs that they have, the aspirations that they have. What do they actually want to use all these wonderful new emerging technologies for? and it promotes the uptake and adoption of technologies. You know, too often we hear, oh, well, older people are resistant to change, older people resist technology. That's certainly not um, my experience and that of many people who ha do research with older people. You had a lovely example um, from Robert about the uh, huge number of ideas that actually come from the community. So, whoops, managed to switch it off, sorry. Um, and that's with a very simple interface. Um, so the two key issues that I'm looking at now are the why do you involve people in design decision making and how to enable designers and users to listen to them. So you have said something about uh, why and the value. And I now want to look at the kinds of methods that we've been using to involve people in, in design and development. Um, there's a long list of methods here and the two that are asterisked the sandpits and the interactive theater are the only ones that I shall uh, have time to, to speak about. So forgive me if you want to know about the others, very happy to do that at lunchtime. Now, the reasons for developing uh, w ways of interacting and engaging people um, in research and in design uh, are twofold, and I think it's really important to emphasize this. It's not just to collect data. Many older people are very frustrated with the fact that People come in um, wanting to do research, 
uh, give them a questionnaire, do things to them, say thank you very much, leave, and that's the last they ever see of those researchers. And there's quite a response, certainly in the UK, to that form of engagement and people saying, no, we don't want to participate unless we understand the reasons for it, uh, etc. and we're going to see something for it and we see the relevance of it. So the, it's been very important in the uh, methods, that list of methods that I just showed you, that people have been enabled to give data to uh, help the researcher or whatever the focus of the um, exercise is about, but it's also been about engaging them in a real way, giving interest, doing something interesting. And I haven't time to talk about all of these, but basically it's tailored to the needs and characteristics. So you saw a mention of a pictorial questionnaire. That was for use with people with very low literacy skills, helpful to give them pictures and ask them to respond to those. One of the uh, examples, one of the ways of engaging people that I want to talk about is sand pits. What do sand pits mean to most of you? Right, great. And what would you say were the primary features of them? They're, they're, they're fun, and you can do new things, and you can build something that nobody's ever built before. You can ha you, you're playing, basically. And the concept of sand pits, which most of us are familiar with as something for children, has been taken into the development laboratories and many companies, probably Intel. Intel do sand pits? Not doing it right. Um, and it's a way of giving people concepts, helping them to see what's possible with the technology, play with it, have good ideas about it. And you see the long list of reasons why they're a, a, a good thing to do. I want to just give you an example of one of them. Um, I, I guess most people in this audience are old enough to remember Eamon Andrews, a TV pro program called This Is Your Life. Yes? Uh, now, in that program, um, Eamon Andrews or Michael Aspel used to surprise celebrities with his big red book, which contained stories of the person's lives, and they'd then invite people from their past to come and talk about it or send in video clips or whatever. They'd invite them to a TV studio where people from their past would come into the show and tell them their stories about how they'd experience people and what their lives were. Now, the sandpit where the reminiscing radio was looked at was people were given that introduction and then asked to say, imagine that instead of a book, you have a radio into which you record your own stories and then you can also get other people to record their stories and to recall you as a child or whatever or in particular circumstances or in the war or on holiday. Uh, so you develop your own story and you, these are recorded into the radio and you can then play it. So this was presented to people uh, in a sandpit, uh, to older people, as an as a, as example of what might be uh, possible. And then uh, people played with it, um, talked about it, and in the sandpit, some of the responses were the concept was thought to be valuable, they'd like it to be smaller and portable, they'd prefer it to be integrated into existing technologies rather than having an old-fashioned uh, radio case, which is the mock-up that had been presented. Uh, so they had all kinds of ideas about what you might do, and the bottom one, bullet point, they suggested the possibility of a device which would include major social events in the form of news. So if you attended a, your daughter's wedding or whatever, you could have it, that built into, included in your uh, radio, and that you'd be enriching it, and as well as the radio, you might have uh, video clips that go with it. So lots of ideas. The point of showing you this is to show, as we've already seen through the morning, how very creative uh, people can be in generating ideas for design. Um, there's some more examples of concepts here. Um, one that I particularly like is the idea of the wall or ceiling story projection. So you can lie in bed or on the sofa and have displayed what you want on, on the wall. Um, and similarly, a projection, a pin board, um, that reminds you that you need to, someone's about to call or that you need to go to the dentist or whatever. So exciting concepts being produced, and the point of these is, I'm sorry, the point of these is that they allow, that that can be fed back to designers and developers so that they have people's ideas about how they would like a product to be. And I think that 
there is such powerful material that comes out of these that any skeptical young designer in their early 20s, and I have met quite a lot of them, who are convinced that older people haven't a clue about technology, won't be able to contribute ideas, um, that you very quickly dispel that and they see the, the value of it. So if we move on to say, well, what do we do with this? It's really about how do you feed this back uh, to the design community and development community. And another method, very excited to see the link with um, the uh, arts groups here, um, using interactive theater. This is a way of taking research findings, lots of things that older people say they want, things they dislike, things they like, things they aspire to have, and building those into scenarios um, so they've got little dramas, if you like. And um, at Dundee, they've generated uh, quite a series now, probably f uh, five or six uh, DVDs, which are about people's use of technologies, the issues that they face. But there is a, they're very accessible as a drama, and, but they, they are based on good research, so they're showing sort of valid information there. And these prove to be really powerful, and the way in which they're used is, it can be in live theater or it can be DVDs, um, and what you do is invite people to then talk about it, and in some cases actually invite in the uh, actors as well who stay in role and talk about the issues. So they're promoting understanding of the needs by key stakeholders, not just designers and developers, but also policy makers. So the key messages that I want to convey is that when we're talking about the application of technology, it can't just be the impos imposition of a device, a system, whatever. It needs to be something that recognizes that you need to engage people, let them talk about their lives. In my jargon, it's about developing a complete socio-technical system. So it's not the imposition of technology, it's rather the introduction and the engagement of people to develop something that works at a societal level, a community level, an individual level, at a family level, and that this, by involving people, uh, you are getting something that actually works for them. So we see the involvement of older people in design and decision making as absolutely crucial to the successful adoption of new technology. And it's been a wonderful morning because I've gained lots and lots of things to support this case. So thank you very much indeed. <laughs>